Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Edward G. Robinson, Dennis O'Keefe, and Marjorie Chapman in Destroyer. Tonight, the Lux Radio Theater comes to you from Hollywood as usual. But your producer speaks to you from Washington, D.C. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Washington, ladies and gentlemen. Greetings, in fact, from the general headquarters of the world. I came here last week for the official Washington preview of the story of Dr. Wassell picture which has kept me busy for two years, but all the effort of those two years was amply rewarded by the audience at Constitution Hall on Saturday night. Their applause was a tribute to the courage of an unassuming country doctor who was there himself, and a tribute to Gary Cooper, who plays Dr. Wassell on the screen. The Navy, from enlisted men to admirals, was there to do honor to its own hero, and tonight in the Lux Radio Theater, we honor the Navy again, because our play is the Columbia action hit, Destroyer. You'll hear the same star who gave a thrilling performance on the screen, Edward G. Robinson. And with him, we have Dennis O'Keefe and Marguerite Chapman. They say in the Navy that once a sailor gets on a destroyer, he never wants any other kind of beauty. He calls the ship a tin can, but he loves her like a sweetheart. You'll see why after you hear tonight's play which combines the fast-moving drama of battle at sea with a little fast-moving romance on land. Now, I don't know whether any romance is involved in the way the following incident came to us, but a girl in Los Angeles has sent us a portion of a letter she received from a corporal in Italy. It belongs in the war diary of Lux Toilet A while back, the corporal writes, I got into a town and, of course, went to the service club where every soldier on pass heads for a flip. Everything is done to make a soldier feel at home. And one of the things I obtained that day was a hot shower. Three of us stayed under the water for a good 40 minutes and just about finished up a cake of Lux toilet soap. A hot bath or shower is almost unobtainable overseas. And when the chance comes, we really snap it up. I've been bathing out of my helmet for so long that I've just about forgotten Lux showers and Lux existence. Something to think of the next time you turn on the hot water. And here's the curtain for the first act of Destroyer, starring Edward G. Robinson as Steve Volosovsky, with Dennis O'Keefe as Mickey, and Marguerite Chapman as Mary. <laughs> In a shipyard somewhere along the California coast, a new destroyer is being rushed to completion. To most of the workers who swarm over her, she's just a job to be done according to Navy specifications in the shortest possible time. But to one man, a boss welder named Steve Boleslavsky, she means much more. Steve is after perfection, stubbornly fighting for it from every man on his ship. Now, Marty, watch out, will you? A rivet won't snug up when it's cold. Yeah, who told you that, Steve? Well, all right, well, you can flush a cold rivet, but not on this ship, Marty. She's got to be tight, kid. She's got to be squeezed. Ah, go on. Go well yourself, it seems. Well, that's no way to talk, Marty. Guys are going to be fighting from these decks. Look, maybe you don't think we know how to build a tight ship. Well, sure, but this one is a John Paul Jones. You can't beat a cold rivet. That one was bad, Marty. It ought to come out. How do you like that guy? Oh, what's the use? We'll chop her out and put in a nice hot one for Steve. Well, that's it, Marty. Thanks. I make such a fuck about it, Steve. It? Now, look, Kansas, never call her a nit. When you've been working on them a little longer, you'll know the chips are like women, and you call them cheap. Yeah, but why? Well, because they curve in the right places, wear a coat of paint, and squawk loud in an argument. How can a guy run a temperature like that over a hunk of tin? Well, she's a hunk of tin now, maybe. Steel, rivet, paint... She's ugly and cold and lifeless as a slab of marble. But one of these days, you'll wake up and find that when you put all these lifeless things together, they suddenly start to have a meaning and movement. And even beauty. Yeah, beauty. The guy's world work. He stops singing, Steve, and finish the job. Yeah, and once she hits the water, it'll be just like a heart that starts beating. You get a name, and the crew will come swarming over a gangway like blood in the thing. She'll throb, she'll breathe, she'll be alive. Yeah, stubborn, tricky, temperamental at times. Like I said, a woman. Yeah, yeah. 
Sure, and then... No, no, Joker, you can't do that. You can't. I have been derelict in my duty, oh, sir. Oh, cut the kidding, Dugan. Will you lay off with that hammer? Why don't you go take a run and jump for yourself? Well, I would if I couldn't do a job better than that. Now, you know that place needs trimming. Come on, Steve. You're getting everybody here again. You think this ship was going to be different from the rest? Well, she is. Steel is steel. A ship's a ship. Yeah, but this one... Well, I, I want her sweet. I, I want her to sing. If you ain't careful, you'll be singing yourself to sleep in a hospital. It's a good thing I'm here they'd have dropped a plate on your head long ago. I don't care. She'll be going in the water sooner, and I want her to be right. We all do, Steve. Just leave us alone. She sure hit the water like a lady, Steve. And look, look, she floats. Uh, there's a real ship, Kansas. Class, personality. Yeah. Hey, hadn't we better go find that daughter of yours? Oh, no, no, no. Let Mary alone. She's right in the middle of more gold braids than she's ever seen. She's having a wonderful time. He sure did a good job with that bottle of champagne. You know how come the Navy picked her to christen the Jones? Because her old man served on the old Jones from the last war. Yeah, me. Mary did a good job because for two weeks I've been teaching her how. I might have known. Hmm? Oh, nothing. I was just hey. thinking of it. Hey. What? Commander. <laughs> Gee, say, you look wonderful. Well, you look pretty good yourself. Oh, uh, uh, Kansas Jackson, uh, Commander Clark. Uh, glad to know you. Mr. Jackson. Well, Steve, the old John Paul didn't look much like this one. Oh. Steve and I used to be shipmates, Mr. Jackson. Hmm. I served under him. He was my chief boatswain's mate. Well, that's a long time ago. You ran me ragged. Well, I said I'd make an officer out of you. He was a combination Simon Legree and old Mother Hen. <laughs> he beat my brains out one minute and coddled me the next. Yeah, that was my system, and apparently it worked. Look at you. Two and a half striper. Yep, here I am. How long are you going to be here, Commander? I'm down here to get my ship. Well, I hope she's a good one. You should know. You built her. But Jones? Sure. Well, what do you know? Kansas. He's going to be the old man on my ship. Well, uh, be sure you get a good crew for her, Commander. Well, you know how it is. Eighty percent of the men will be green. Well, look me up, Steve. Sure wish you were coming with us. Fine, Mr. Jack. Yeah, glad to meet you. I'll see you tomorrow, Commander. Steve, that ain't such a bad idea, that joining up business. Yeah, did you hear what he said? Green man. Green men on the Jones. I don't like that, Kansas. No, I don't like that at all. Wonder if my uniform still fits me. Well, Mary, how do I look, huh? You better take it off, Dad. I'm afraid it needs a little letting out in the bag. Oh, go on, it fits me fine. <laughs> I bet you never figured your old man would be back in the Navy again, did you? Back aboard the Jones. <laughs> Dad, I haven't seen you so happy in years. Now listen to this. Play up! All hands on the pantail! All in the Liberty Party! Dolly is a pretzel. Catch that, will you? Uh, will, will you, honey? I, I want to look for my boat and spice. Oh, it's up in the chest, uh, up in the attic. Uh, holler if that's the mailman, will you? If I don't get my order soon, the Jones will sail without me. Special delivery, miss. Sign here, please. Oh, Dad! Dad, it's here from the Navy Department. Thanks. Yes, ma'am. Dad! Yes, yeah, I'm coming. Where is it, uh, Mary? Oh, special delivery, huh? Well, about time. <laughs> well, this is it, Mary, my order. No. No, I won't accept them. Naval training station. They can't do this to me. Dad, do what? Beach me. That's what they want to do. Put me on the beach, training a lot of boots. But they've taken you back. That's what you wanted. Well, I fly for duty aboard the Jones. Here, here, read it. Not considered fit for sea duty. Well, we'll see about that. Dad, where are you going? To San Diego, to Commander Clark, to the John Paul Jones. All right, gentlemen, who's waiting? Donahue, sir, and Bola Slapsky. Ask Bola Slapsky to wait. Send in Donahue. Aye, aye, sir. Commander Clark will see you, sir. Very well, thanks, son. Well, not you, sir. Both and Donahue. Oh. Uh, thanks, son. He'll see you in a little while, sir. Both and straight first class Donahue, sir, reporting for duty. Commander Logan spoke to me about you, Donahue. He gave you a good mark. I served under him on the Decatur, sir. For the present, you'll serve as chief boat. Now, thank you, sir. Oh, sir, any chance of having a job for chief? I've passed all my examination. I want a happy ship, Donahue. Do your stuff and you'll get it. Aye, aye, sir. Get a gun crew and damage control party in the trading. Start your day. I saw it on here. Aye, aye, sir. Thank you, sir. Steve. Hello, Commander. Come on in. Sit 
down. Sit down. What are you doing here? And in uniform. Reporting to duty, sir. All right, fine, Steve. What ship? The John Paul Jones, sir. The ship? The Jones? Well, you said you'd like me on board, sir. Well, Steve, I uh, I just signed on my chief boatman. Well, it's a get him a transfer, isn't it, sir? I couldn't let the Jones get away without me. I'm afraid you'll have to. Well, that sounds like you don't want me. You know it isn't that. Just, well, this is a different Navy, Steve, than it was in 1917. I can't take the risk. Well, what risk, sir? What do you think I've been doing all these years? I've been building ships, sir. I built this ship, the Jones. I know every seam and rivet and bolt in her. I know how you feel, but... Uh, what kind of a crew are you going to have, sir? Green men. You'll have a good crew. Well, a good crew isn't enough, sir. She wants a great crew. Remember the gang on the old Jones, sir? Top, cocky. They were from a great ship. They were proud. Well, that part of the Navy hasn't changed, has it, sir? No. Well, then, how about uh, letting me go to sea on after a little while? Just to get the lady started in. Steve, you really think you've got what it takes? Oh, sure, sir. All right, let me have your orders. Well, I'm sorry, sir, but I haven't got any orders. What? Yes, but uh, now that you want me, you could arrange for that very easily, couldn't you, sir? You... Get out of here, Steve, as fast as you can. In five seconds, I'm going to face my mind. Aye, aye, sir. And remember this, you're a gun crew now. I know we're on land, but this gun here is exactly like your station aboard ship. But you're not going to touch the guns on the Jones till you know how to handle them. All right, station. Range 4000. Range 4000. Scale 500. Hold it, hold it. Hey, go away, will you? This is gunnery drill. Yeah? Well, you're in battle. A gun captain is killed. What do you do? Nothing. What do you mean, nothing? I'm dead. I'm the gun captain. Now, will you beat it, please? Hey, who are you? Donahue, acting chief boat. You were acting chief boat. Come on, Junior, hand over the muscle looking support to the old man. I'm Bullis Lofsky, new leading chief. Yeah, well, when did all this happen? I said hand over the muscle book. You better know your stuff, You Mr. better know yours, or I'll show you how fast that pro can fly off your arm. Yeah, just watch your own. You're on a destroyer now. Now, listen, you. I've wrung more salt water out of my socks than you've ever sailed on. Any more cracks? You know, you don't look like a destroyer man to me. You're a metal man. Silver in your hair, gold in your teeth, and lead in your feet. Looks, all I, looks like I'll have to get rid of you, son. If I don't, you're going to be dreaming up things to hang. Oh, no, not me, brother. Just give you enough rope, and you'll do a better job of it yourself. <laughs> First, I want you to meet Lieutenant Morton, Steve. He's our executive officer. Lieutenant Morton. At ease, Steve. Thank you, sir. Steve, I have to talk to you about the men. You can't push these kids around. They're smart and they're hard workers. Well, they're not now, sir, but they will be. What's this I hear about your canceling liberty? I thought it best, sir, till we were ready to shove off. I want you to rescind that order. The dance tonight at the canteen. I'm going, and I want to see my crew there, too. Yes, sir. Now, uh, about Donahue. Yes, sir. He just asked for a transfer. Well, I recommend it, sir, for the good of the ship. And I told him to stay put. He's a good man. Now, come on, Steve. Break down. Sometimes you can get a lot farther with a pat on the back. That's right, sir. If it's low enough. Okay. That's all. Yes, sir. Thank you. Well, Morton, that's the new chief. For my money, I'll take down of you. I want them both. Well, then, sir, you'd better start thinking of some way to make them get along. Not a bad idea. I think I know just what to do. That's our problem, Mary. The chance for you to do us all a big favor. I see. Now, that's Donahue there over in the corner. You can leave the rest to me, Commander. Here comes your father. I'm uh, I'm going. I don't want him to suspect him. Hi, Dad. Working hard, honey? You should hear the line these sailors have been handing me. Look, baby, tomorrow we may die. We sailors live from day to day. Yeah, and when I go away, I make them back once. I make them back twice. <laughs> but the third time... Now, you better be careful of that line, Mary. You know your mom fell for it once. Uh, Daddy, excuse me. I promised this dance to one of the boys. Well, sure, but it's getting late. Better be thinking about getting home. Now, you know, uh, when I saw you before talking to the old man, I said to myself, Mr. Donahue, that is for you. Just like that. Well, sure, I'm a destroyer. Say, uh, how about me taking you home, huh? 
I think you'd better read this. Huh? Oh. It's absolutely forbidden for canteen hostesses to leave the premises with one of the guests. Oh. Well, let's just dance then, huh? Let's. Followed you home. So I see. You know it's against the rules for you to be here. Well, so what? And dangerous, isn't it, if you're caught? Oh, what's danger to me when tomorrow I die? Oh, I may come back once, maybe twice, but the third time... Oh. All right. Come on in. I'll fix you a cup of coffee. Uh, say, it's, uh, it's awful bright in here, isn't it? I don't want you to fall over the furniture. Like your coffee black? Well, I'd like the room black and a coffee light. Uh, to tell you the truth, I think I could skip the Java. Mm -hmm. How about some bacon and eggs? No, no, maybe later. I can't pitch on a full stomach. You know, you're just about the smoothest piece of satin I've ever seen. Thanks. You're more than just good-looking. You're. Uh, can't you talk without using your hands? Uh, well, I do them. Put them in your pocket. In the Navy, we don't have such. Oh. You know, I, I know you run into a lot of guys, and you hear some pretty smooth lines, too. Oh, but me, uh... stop playing house. The answer is no. Well, you'd think I was trying to kiss you or something. Well, aren't you? Yep. Mickey, I've got something to tell you. Well, they always got something to tell you. Chief Boleslavsky is my father. Oh. Well, I'd better abandon ship. Well, he isn't as bad as all that. With a world full of Smiths, Callahans, and Ginsburgs, I had to pick a Boleslavsky. Life is just a bowl of. I want to talk to you about him. Oh, so that's why I got the big come on tonight, huh? Commander Clark's afraid he might have to transfer that. I want you to help me. How? The Jones sails without my father, and it'll just about break his heart. Oh, now, look, I'm not saying he isn't the right guy. He's just a little too much on the corny side. Look, Mary, I was leading chief for almost 30 minutes. Then your old man comes along, and I'm out. If he knew his business, why, well, that'd be okay, sure. But the minute he opened his big gap, I knew he didn't know from nothing. That's why I want you to help. The rest of the men mustn't find out. If you really got to know him, Mickey, you'd be crazy about him. Okay, okay. And you might tell him I'm not such a bad guy either. You bet I will. Well, good night, Mickey, and thanks. What for? For following me home. Well, I ought to be disappointed. What? Oh, no coffee, no bacon, no eggs, no nothing. Well, next time, don't expect so much. Yeah. Good night. Uh, wait a minute, sir. Must be a better way than this to say good night. Good night. A good, uh, uh oh. What? Uh, look who's drawing up. Hi, Steve. What goes on here? Say, you got a nice girl there, Steve. You know, it's against the rules to take out girls from the canteen. I get out of oh, here. Oh, Dad, Keep please. Keep quiet and get in the house. You know, the guy was going to let me have enough rope to hang myself. Now, look, Steve, all I remember is that I worked hard and I waited a long time to be rated chief. No crime to say goodnight to your daughter. I told you it's against regulations for you to be here. Well, after dark, I kind of make up my own regulations. Put yourself on a report. Well, you can't send me to the mass for this. I can't, huh? You're going to the mass. Okay, see? If I gotta go, it might as well be for something worthwhile. I'm sorry, Mary. I'm awful sorry. <laughs> After a brief intermission, you'll hear Edward G. Robinson, Dennis O'Keefe, and Marguerite Chapman in the second act of Detroit. You know, nowadays, most women are so busy with extra wartime work that there are scarcely any more of those leisurely days that seem to go by like this. No, now it's more like this. Busy. Everyone's busy. And that's why women find they have to be more careful than ever to use the right complexion care a care they can depend on. They can't afford to let these busy days steal away good looks. Goodness, what's wrong with my skin? It's so dull looking. No glow anymore. No. Women can't take risks with beauty. So every day... Lux Toilet Soap Beauty Facials are such an easy care. Take only a few moments. You just cover your face generously with a rich, creamy lather, rinse with warm water, splash cold if you like, then pat gently with a soft towel to dry. No need now to worry about your skin. It's fresher, smoother, and it looks it. 
In recent tests of Lux Toilet Soap facials, actually three out of four complexions improved in a short time. Skin grew softer, smoother, lovelier. Yes, Hollywood Beauty Soap, the mild white soap nine out of ten screen stars use to care for their million-dollar complexions. Hollywood Beauty Soap is a care you can depend on as the busy days go by to help you keep your complexion what you really want it to be. Smooth, exquisite, lovely to look at, soft to touch. Ask for Lux Toilet Soap tomorrow. If your dealer is temporarily out of stock, he's sure to have more soon. Remember, Lux Toilet Soap is worth waiting for. Now, Act Two of Destroyer, the biography of a fighting ship, starring Edward G. Robinson as Steve, Dennis O'Keefe as Mickey, and Marjorie Chapman as Mary. <laughs> Mary succeeded admirably in bringing together Mickey Donahue and her father, but Mickey's uppercut to Steve's chin was hardly the message she would have chosen. Mary, however, has persuaded Steve to drop his charges against Mickey, and Steve has almost forgotten his bitterness and the excitement of the day that followed. For at last, the John Paul Jones is ready to put to sea on her first trial run. All right, all right, man. I know it's been a tough week. You've been kicked around till you don't know whether you've been coming or going. But out there is your ship. Your new home. She's going to mean an awful lot to you, so respect her. Be proud of her. When you walk up that gangway, keep your heads high. She's the John Paul Jones, and she's going to be the best tin can in the Navy. Good luck. She open quarters. A message, Chief. Commander Clark. What is it? She'd like to see you aboard. Yes, sir. I said you wanted to see it. Yeah. Well, as long as I have to get rid of him, it's best to do it now before we shove off. Come in. Reporting, sir. Sit down, Steve. I'll be on the bridge, sir. Well, oh. you've got a fine ship, Commander Clark. Now, well, it seems only yesterday I put you on the train for Annapolis. I knew you'd make an officer, sir. I'm proud of you. Thanks, Steve. There's uh, something I have to talk to you about. Yes, sir, I know. You know. I picked it up coming to your office. Here it is, sir. Our commission panel. Oh. The captain always rates the first panel when he puts the ship into submission. Here, sir. Yes. We'll Thank you, Chief. We'll show these kids how it's done, Commander. Yes, we'll show them. Uh, anything else I can do, sir? No. Nothing. Get out on deck. General quarters in 20 minutes. Morning, sir. Report's ready for radio, sir. Pretty lengthy report for one day at sea. No use in trying to hide it, Morton. I'm sick over it. Well, I guess that's what takedown proof is for. Yeah, let's see it. 0815, steering gear failed due to overheating of electric motor. 0936, starboard fourth draft blower and number one fire room failed due to burnout bearings. 1020, port main condenser salted up to 10 grains. Oh, uh, about the gyro compass, sir. It's still acting up. Put it on the report. Yes, sir. I've, uh... I've been seeing a lot of Boleslavsky, sir. I know. I tried to kick him off yesterday. I couldn't do it. I'll try to keep him out of trouble. Yes, sir. Well, we're ready, sir, to start gunnery practice. All right, Morton. Sound general alarm. Condition one. Aye, aye, sir. All right, now keep your cross wires on. Take it easy and don't press. Okay. Check the automatic loader and be sure to find... Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, what about the fuse? Well, what about it? Well, we always used to set the fuse before we loaded. Well, this ain't the last war. We set the fuse in the hoist, see? Now, don't try to be telling me, Junior. This gun better be right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You taking the necessary deck precautions? What precautions, sir? First aid kits, buckets, sand. Where are they? Well, I'm sorry, sir. Stand by after gun. Stand by. Report to me later, Bullets. Yes, sir. Load after gun. Load. Commence firing. Fire. <laughs> Firing. He's firing. Stand by any aircraft battery. Stand by any aircraft battery. <laughs> Commence firing. Commence firing. Now lead that target. Stay ahead of it. No, no. Get your cross wires on that target. Ollie off, Steve, you hear? Yes, yeah, I say get your cross wires on that target. Bring it up, will you? Now you don't know what time it is. You can't talk like that to me. I'm the leading chief. And I'm captain of this battery. Secure and I'll... any aircraft battery. Secure any aircraft battery. Well, Steve, you did a swell job. 100%. All misses. Well, these men don't know their job. Uh, now you're really being stupid. 
Say, how much do you figure this tin can weighs? 1,800 tons. Why? Uh, I was just thinking. She'd make a great contribution to the scrap drive. You know what would have happened on the old Jones if you made a crack like that? No. Tell us, Stevie. What? This! Hey, 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 hey. And on top of everything else, you slug Donahue. Why can't you handle your men? Oh, I can take care of my men, all right, sir. They just don't know how to handle my ship. My ship. My ship. The crew's sick and tired of hearing you say that. You don't know what it's all about anymore, Steve, and you haven't spent five minutes trying to learn. The men don't respect you, and they don't respect the ship. I want you to put in for a transfer. Because I hit on you, sir? I don't want to discuss it. I'm asking you to transfer. I can't do that, sir. Well, there's nothing else I can do, Steve. Lieutenant Morton put you on report. It means a court-martial as soon as we reach port. The finding of the general court-martial in the case of Steve Boleslavsky, Chief Bozen's mate, United States Navy. Guilty of incompetency and leadership. The sentence of this court is that the prisoner shall be reduced to the next inferior rating. Donahue? Aye, aye, sir. Take over the duties of the leading chief boatswain's mate. Aye, aye, sir. Return to your station, gentlemen. The court is dismissed. Thank you. Steve, I'd rather have taken a beating than see this happen. That's all right. You did what you had to do. Thanks. Well, goodbye. Goodbye? I don't have to leave the Jones, do I? We don't want to serve under Donahue. Oh, I'll serve under anyone. Well, I'd say that's entirely up to Donahue. May I speak with him, sir? If you like. Donahue? Yes, sir? Come here, please. I hope it works out the way you want it to, Steve. Thank you, sir. Yeah? Uh, I don't, uh, I don't want to transfer. Captain says it's up to you. How about it? Hey, you're making it kind of tough for me, Steve. Well, how come? Well, if I say no, I'm a heel. I say yes, I... Well, you're going to need help, Johnny. You, you can use me. Well, I'll think it over. And I'll tell you, come aboard in the morning. I'll, uh, I'll give you my answer. Miss? Yes? That's Chief John Hugh now. Coming down the dock. Thank you. Hey. Hey, is that you, Mary? Hello, Mickey. What are you doing down here at the dock? It's just after 11. Well, I wanted to see you, Mickey. Did your old man know you're here? No, I left him home. I told him I was going to the canteen. Can I talk to you about it? Sure, why not? But someday you're going to surprise me, you know, and talk about us. Mickey, keep that on the ground. Would it make you happy if I said yes? Very happy. Okay, then be very happy. I'll tell Steve in a moment. Oh, thanks, Mickey. And say, uh, you said you're supposed to be at the canteen. Uh-huh. It uh, doesn't close until 12. Mm -mm. That'd give us about 40 minutes. Like the dance, lady? I'd love to. Okay, baby, let's go. Commander Walter S. Clark, USS John Paul Jones, put to sea immediately following repairs. Imperative to give us speed ratings without delay. Signed, Commandant, 11th Naval District. Casey? Yeah? How's it going down in the engine room? Think that's how it's going. What's your first cruise, yes, Casey, huh? What about it? I'm doing my job. I'm sure you are, but it's not like a job on the beach. You don't know it, Casey, but you're on, uh... Well, this is like a honeymoon. If this is a honeymoon, I hope we sight Reno soon. Well, a, a ship is a woman. She's born, she grows up, she goes to school. She gets some fancy clothes and starts looking the field over. The crew comes aboard. Well, that's like a courtship. They get acquainted. And uh, when she's commissioned, that's the marriage ceremony. And the shakedown crews, well, like I said, that's the honeymoon. And from now on, it's got to be 50-50. Now, you've got to watch over her, Casey, and she'll watch over you. If you ask me, they brought the mother-in-law on this honeymoon. You. I don't know whether you get paid to haunt this ship or if they just drew you in on the blueprint. Listen to this tub boy. Well, what's wrong? you got ears, haven't you? Just listen. She's tearing herself apart. The old man keeps asking for more turns, more turns. Well, he's got him. Ah, feel us shaking. He wants more turns. To blow a topper any minute. Moving right along, Captain. Yeah. 30 minutes more and we'll really know what the Jones can do. Seems pretty noisy, sir. 
My orders are to open her up wide and give her the work. Wish we had more time. So do I, but I do what I'm told. Yes? Main steam line gasket just blew, sir. Oil line's broken. He's on fire. Get your men out. Do what you can, but take no chances. And Casey, ca Hello? Hello? Sound alarm, Morton. Damage control and fire rescue party. Aye, aye, sir. All right, close that hatch and dog it down. Well, Casey's still down there. I'm going after him. All right, don't be crazy. I'll have this asbestos suit on three minutes flat. If you wait to get into that, Casey will score. I'm going now. Follow up as fast as you can. Steve! Well, how do you feel, Steve? Oh, I guess I'll live, sir. Casey? Well, you pull through, too. You saved his life, Steve. In the ship. How's the Jonesy? A little on the well done side, but we got the fire out. We're returning to base for repairs. Now, I know what you're thinking. All we do is go out to sea and then have to put about some mechanical failures. Now, but she's a good ship, sir. I know it. Uh, I'm afraid the Navy doesn't agree, Steve. I just got orders. Our shakedown's rated to failure. We're to serve in the Northwest Pacific as a mail and dispatch vessel. Mail? Well, a lot of the boys have applied for transfer. I can't blame them. Maybe now you'll want that transfer, too. They say the ship's just no good, Steve. Well, if it's okay with you, sir, I'm... I'm staying with it, Joe. Mickey, well, come on in. Take it easy. Take it easy. Where's your old man? Oh, the coast is clear. He's at the hospital. Hospital? Oh, he's fine. The Navy doctor just wanted to give him a final checkup. Oh. You know, uh, we shove off again in a couple of days. That's kind of why I wanted to see you. Oh? Yeah. I was wondering what your attitude is regarding letter carriers. Letter carriers? Yeah, that's what our job is now, you know. Mailboat. Oh, yes. Dad told me. Oh, the letter carriers, I think they're wonderful. Oh, you do, huh? And what's your attitude regarding marriage? I consider it a very sensible practice for two people in love. But then you accept my proposal? I didn't know you were proposing, Mickey. Well, what would you think I was doing, practicing? My name is Silbo Slot. Yeah, and it's just about time you change it. <laughs> well, what's so funny? I was just thinking about Dad when we tell him. <laughs> you mean you'll have me? Oh, Mary, <laughs> say, gee, I... Oh, hey, wait a minute. Did your old man have to know? Mickey. Yeah, 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 I guess he does. But why? Mickey, I love you, but but I've lived with one stubborn mule all my life. Yeah, and I... yeah, but wait. Promise me one thing. What? Get married first and tell him after. i got a better idea. Well, what's that? Let's fight it out on the way to the creature. Come on. And, and look, honey, when the time comes, uh, you tell him, huh? After all, you know him better than I do. And besides, the old guy still packs a terrific wallet. Trying to tell me, Doctor. I feel fine. The burns are practically here. What's that thing? An x-ray picture, Steve. It's your lung. See, there's a shadow on it. Shadow? There's a lesion on your lung, Steve, from breathing in all that smoke and gas. It's healing, but sea duty is out. Out for good. Well, you can't put me on the beach for a little thing like this. Sir. I'm sorry, Steve. Here's my report. Take it to Captain Clark now. Collect your gear from the Jones and report back here for further treatment. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Hey, what's going on here? What are you guys packing up for? You shove off soon. Well, we thought the Jones was in the Navy. Now we find out we're playing post office. So we're going to get ourselves another ship. Yeah. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. If you're doing this because of me... Pipe down. We're leaving this broken down jalopy because we joined the Navy to fight, not to lug mail. Well, what difference does that make? You've got a job to do. And it ain't delivering postcards. If you had any sense, you'd transfer, too. This is supposed to be a shooting war. We want to get on a fighting ship. All right, suppose you make the Jonesy one. Oh, Jonesy, Jonesy. That's where I came in. You boys ever take a good look at this? A good look at what? This. This picture here on the boat here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the man they named the ship after. John Paul Jones. See what it says, Sir Ricky. Go ahead, read it, wise guy. Sure, sure, I'll read it. It says I have not yet begun to fight. Yeah. 
You know, it started something when he said that. That was during the battle between the old Bon Army Richard and the Therapy. In case you don't know who the guy is they named the ship after, he was the skipper of the old Bon Army Richard. And of all the broken down, stinking old tubs that ever carried a gun, she was the worst. They called her a 40 gun frigate. Well, Jones had another name for her, but he kept it to himself. He asked for a ship, and this is what he drew. <laughs> so he gets himself a crew together, and they start off on a shakedown crew. Boy, what a nightmare. She creaked and she leaked. She refused to answer the helm, and to top it off, her guns wouldn't fire. When they put back in the port, the crew, to, the crew told Jones to take a ship and toss it back to the old ladies of France who gave it to him. I don't know how he got them to stick together, but he did, and off they go looking for trouble. So he ran smack into the 44-gun therapy. Hmm. There she is, the pride of the Royal Navy. And with her is the lion, another 20 guns. The back of those guns were fighters. Don't let anybody tell you that from those lions could fight. And no sooner did they sight the old Bon Army Richard and they open up with everything they've got. Now from then on, Jones did nothing but take it. An officer goes to the quarter deck where Jones is fighting his ship and he says, We're through, sir. Our ship can't last 20 minutes. In that case, said Jones, put her alongside the therapy. And when we go down, we'll take the therapy with us. Well, by now, the Bon Army Richard is ablaze from stem to stern and the captain of the therapy can't see our flag on account of the smoke. Aboard the Bonhomme Richard, he called. You struck your flag? Do you surrender? What do you think Jones answered? Go ahead, read it, Director. Read what he said. I have not yet become to fight. Yeah. He wasn't lying. They grappled, and Jones led his men in one of the wildest knockdown and drag out fights in history. It was the first American naval victory. And there on the deck of the captured therapy, Jones and his men looked back to see their old Bon Army Richard go down on plane. Some of them cheered at it. Some of them sang Yankee Doodle. Others just turned away. But every one of them had tears in his eyes. You see, uh, they, they didn't know that they loved him until after they fought for it. Now, that's the way it was in their Navy. It was passed along over the years, and that's the way it was in mine. You felt all the ship like, like you do toward a woman, and when you married her, you took her for better or for worse. You didn't leave her when the going got tough. Oh, never mind. What's the difference? Go ahead. Go ahead and find yourself a better ship. Well, we, we can't get out till we get our transfers. Yeah, maybe. Well, I was just thinking. Yeah, there ain't no rush. Let's hang around a while longer. What do you say, guys? Yeah. Hey, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. The first jerk who leaves, I will personally beat his ears off. The trouble with you guys is you ain't got no morals. Yeah. Hey, Steve, where are you going? Oh, just up on deck for a minute. Oh, you left an envelope on your bunk. Oh, something from the Navy hospital, huh? Here, thanks. Just my orders to report back for duty aboard the John Paul Jones. <laughs> Pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. In a few moments, Edward G. Robinson, Dennis O'Keefe, and Marjorie Chapman will return in Act Three of Destroyer. And now, we take you into the kitchen of an American housewife, where, innocently enough, a crime is being committed. Oh, lady, lady, please don't do that. Why, what's the matter? You just threw away enough valuable antiseptics to treat two wounded soldiers. Antiseptics? What on earth do you mean? This messy old black grease I've been scraping out of my roasting pan? It doesn't matter how black or burnt it is. It's fat, and any kind of fat is needed to help make the medicines our fighting men must have. I didn't realize, of course. I've only been saving clear grease to turn into the butcher. That's fine as far as it goes. But your government needs every single drop of used fat you can save. What you skim off the top of pure soup. 
the scrapings from the frying or roasting pan, your rendered down table scraps or meat trimming. What do you mean by rendered down? Save the waste solid fat cut from meat or scraped from plates, then melt it down in the oven whenever you're roasting or baking. Twenty tablespoons saved that way help make enough healing sulfur ointment to treat a severe burn or skin infection. Any kind of used fat or oil is equally valuable then? That's it, and well worth the trouble of saving when you realize the need for life-saving medicines on our fighting fronts everywhere. I find it's easier to save if I keep a tin can right on the back of my stove. Then it's always handy to pour in the melted fat. And it's most important to take the can to your butcher often. Remember, your government thanks you with two red ration points a pound. And your butcher pays you four cents for every pound you bring in. I'm delighted to get those extra ration points. But you can bet I'll save even more carefully from now on if the need is so vital. Thank you, Mrs. America. You've been doing a wonderful job. I know you'll do even a better one when you realize how precious every single drop of your used kitchen fat really is. After the play, you'll hear a curtain chat between Mr. DeMille in Washington and our stars here in Hollywood. But now, the third act of Destroyer, starring Edward G. Robinson, Dennis O'Keefe, and Marguerite Chapman. It's two weeks later. With all her available space packed with sacks of mail, the John Paul Jones pushes through the frigid waters of the Northwest Pacific. Her destination, Dutch Harbor. Now, just before dusk, the retiring watch is in the mess room, drinking coffee and listening to the radio. According to a latest dispatch from General MacArthur, in the northern Pacific, a communique just received from the Navy Department announces that the Japanese are making desperate efforts to strengthen their position on Attu. The enemy force is moving in great numbers to attempt other landings for an eventual attack on the mainland. Oh, yeah. Turn that thing off. And now for the world of... Holy smoke, did you hear what he said? That's right, where we're heading, ain't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, well, Jonesy has finally declared war. How far off are we? About 200 miles from Dutch Harbor. Uh, come on, Steve, we better get below. Uh, what goes? Damage control inspection. Say, what am I, anyway? I might as well be a passenger. To all hands. To all hands. Hey, hold it, you guys. The old man. To all hands. I know you'll be glad to hear we've just been instructed to proceed to a rendezvous with fighting units of the fleet to engage the Japanese task force. Yay! Now, in case you're worried about the mail, we'll deliver it all right, but there might be a slight delay. I want every man on this ship to... One moment. A uh, supplementary command just came through. There's a change in the preceding orders. Our instructions are to put in at Sitka. That's all. Sitka? Why don't they tell us in plain language that we're not good enough to fight? We'll probably be up in Sitka till the war is over. Yeah, probably. Say, Steve. Yeah? I got something on my mind. Well, so have I plenty. Steve, I'm a sucker for asking you this, but I was wondering, do you mind if I marry your daughter? What? Now, that's a simple question, Steve. What's the answer? You know what the answer is. It's no. Yeah. Yeah, I figured that. All right, come on. Let's get below. Captain Clark, communications reporting, sir. Captain Clark, communications reporting, sir. Come in, communications. Enemy aircraft, sir. Bearing 342, distance about 75 miles, approaching rapidly. Stay on it. I want constant reports. Aye, aye, sir. Mr. Morton. Sir? Sound general quarters. Sound general quarters. Aye, aye, sir. There they are. Six of them coming out of the clouds. Dive bomber. And aircraft battery. Stand by. Stand by. Here they come. Come in firing. Come in firing. All right, keep under cover. They're going to spray. Hey, a guy could get killed around here. Keep on those guns, will you? That's it, we got one of them. Pull it on, you guys, they're dirty. Oh, that's where the bomb exploded. 
The flood at that. We lose the top burners in the engine room, we cold meat. Well, the speed we're making, we're sure to lose the top burners. Got to maintain speed. Well, Lieutenant Morton? Yeah? How you doing? Oh, we're going too fast, sir, to control flooding. The plates just won't hold. Got a reason for speed. There's a Jap sub out there riding. The planes must have signaled our position. A sub? But we'll carry the pieces under this much steam. The sub will soon be within attacking range. If we slow down, we're gone. It'll be dark soon. If we keep going, we may be able to lose it. Well, this is a ship, sir. You can't ask her for miracles. Show it and get aft. Take a look at the bulkhead seams and report to the bridge. Aye, aye. Pretty fast below, Captain. Water almost at the burners. How much are we listening? 18 degrees. Captain Clark, sir. Yes? All the after bulkheads are split seams, sir. Both fire rooms are gone. Main pumps are out. We've lost practically all steam. Yeah, wait a minute. I told you to stay below the bulkheads. Well, the men are working on them, but it's no use. There's only one way to stop flooding, and I think Captain Clark will agree. What? Captain Clark, sir. Hold it. Go ahead, communication. New bearing on enemy sub. 225, range 5500. Very well. All right, what's on your mind, Pete? Well, there's one way to patch those bulkheads, sir, and that's with welding. I'd like your permission. I know the ship backwards, and we've got all the equipment. You're not in a shipyard, Boleslavsky. You're aboard a destroyer. On our way to the bottom. He ain't going to the bottom. Kilometer reads a 22-degree list, sir. Increasing rapidly. Now, that's settled. Sort of Stand aside that speaker, Don. Aye, sir. Commander Clark, to all hands. To all hands. Set depth charges on safety. Take all wounded men on deck and prepare to abandon ship. Stand by. Engines have stopped, sir. We're drifting. You're not going to leave her, sir. I can make a water tie. Steve, use your head. She's liable to capsize any minute. There are 250 men aboard. They've got to be saved to fight on another ship. Yes, but I can save this ship for them to fight on, sir. Uh, now that she's stopped, we won't have to worry about water pressure. I can patch up that, sir. But there's a sub out there within torpedo range. Well, sure, but there's a good chance, sir. They won't waste a torpedo on us in the dark. They'll play it safe and wait till daylight. And how do you expect to weld our plates in that time? Oh, give me a chance, sir. I'll, I'll bet my life on it. Let me pick just a few men. Uh, send the rest of the crew over the side. All right, Steve. Pick them and on the double. You've got your first man right here. Me. What? Okay, Donnie. You. Go on, get below and I'll round up the others. Kansas? Yeah? Getting anywhere? I'll be all shored up here in ten minutes. Without that pressure, it's a spit. Good. Men are in the lifeboat, Steve. Pulling away. Communication staying with us. Says the sub's about 4,000 yards off, circling. Well, that's a sure sign. They're waiting till daylight. Uh, Kansas, how about that diesel generator? All right, John, you got your light, ain't you? The juice to well, get going. All well, right, just keep her turning over. How long before you're ready, Steve? Ready right now, sir. How many hours should it take? About three, sir. Three hours are no good, Steve. We're too far north. I've just checked. Day breaks at 136. Excuse me, sir, but we've got to have time to get up steam after she's finished and pick up the crew. They haven't drifted too far. Well, uh, how much time can I have? About two hours and 15 minutes, Steve. It's up to you. Two hours and 50. Well, what am I waiting for? Uh, okay, Donnie, you start the oxygen and keep those electrodes coming. How's it look on deck, Kansas? Still black and it's cold goes hot, sir. What time you got, Donnie? Eight minutes after midnight. Sir. Still circling, sir. Communication says 3,000 yards. Well, while we're waiting, sir, we can reset the depth charges. Well, 250 of our men somewhere nearby. We can't take a chance. Just just waiting around, sir. Ain't there something we can do? Sure. Start praying. Steve's coming up, sir. Get me. Get me another electrode. How is it, Steve? Save your breath, will you? You may need it. You're on your last 30 minutes, Steve. Well, I'm doing the best I can. Hey, you want a drink? Shut up, will you? Let me get back to work. How's it look? Seems to be holding out, sir. Still working. I'm afraid to look at my watch. Six more minutes to go, sir. Man, come here. Right, sir. Be ready to go above. We may have to call it quits. We can do it. Captain, we can. Captain, Captain, look. What is it? Well, the water line is dropping. Maybe just the water running forward. He's coming up. Get that electrode ready. Steve, Steve. Yeah? It's too late, Steve. We're going over the side. And what, what time is it? Almost 1.30. Too late, huh? No, we've got six minutes to spare. You can get your steam up, sir. The job's finished. Visibility good, sir. No sign of our lifeboat. Good. Reset all depth charges. 
Engine room to bridge, sir. Engine room to bridge. Go ahead, Donahue. Runners all clear, sir. Steam up. Everything wide open. Keep it coming. Steve. Yes, sir. Stay on the helm. We're wide open. Steady on the course. Steady on the course. Aye, aye, sir. Periscope float on starboard bow, sir. Steve, right. Full rudder. Subs picked up our engines. You won't surface now. Torpedo wake, sir. One point on starboard bow. Bridge to engine room. All engines ahead, one half. All engines ahead, one half, sir. He'll miss by 50 yards, sir. Meet that sub, Steve. Follow down that torpedo wake. Aye, aye, sir. Kansas. Stand by depth charges. Stand by depth charges. Right full rudder, Steve. Hard right. Right full rudder, sir. Start dropping them, Kansas. Release depth charges. Engine room. All engines ahead full. All engines ahead full. Think you'll hold together for a few more minutes, Steve? He'll hold, sir. He's a great ship. Depth charges don't get the subs. You may have to surface. Yes, but we don't have a crew to man our guns, sir. That's why we're going to ram her. Ram her? Holy smoke! Look, Tonto, get ahead, sir! Steve, swing her over. We'll run right into her. The wreck has got a lot to learn yet. There she is, Steve. Aim just half the conning tower. Ready now, she's going to fire. Stand by to ram! Steve, I've been looking all over for you. I'm sorry, sir, but... Uh... Now that we're tying up in home port, I figured it was time to say goodbye to the show. I've just been giving her a last look over it. But you're coming back. Why, we're joining a task force. Captain, I uh, should have given you this envelope a few weeks ago. Yes, I just forgot. From the Navy hospital. I'm unfit for service, sir. What? Well, you just take it easy for a while. You'll be back on the Jones. <laughs> oh, no. Now, it's like I said. <laughs> All I ever wanted was to get the lady started right. She's going out in fast company now, sir, and Johnny was the chief. I see. Well, the crew's on deck, Steve. Don't you want to say goodbye? Oh, what for? They'll be tickled to death to throw me out of their head. The least you can do is say goodbye. Oh. Okay. Here goes. Ship company! At ease, men. Steve, these boys wanted to do something for you. All 250 of them. They agree that this is the only fitting remembrance we can give you. Your stripes as Chief Bolton's mate, and this. The commission, Pennon? And with it goes our thanks for giving us the John Paul Jones. What do you say, man? Thanks. Thanks. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving the Jones. Only one thing I'd like you to do for me. When you walk down the street, be proud. Swagger, because you're from the best tin can in the fleet. And, uh, well, <laughs> I guess I can't say anymore. Captain Clark, request permission to leave ship. Permission granted. Good luck. Oh, uh, hey, Steve, wait a minute. I'll, uh, I'll walk down with you. Oh, sure. Somebody waiting for us on the dock, see? Mary. Yes. Hiya, honey. Mickey, darling. Hey, what goes on here? Oh, uh... Dad, meet my husband. Huh? Now, look here, Donnie. I told you no. Yeah, but that was when you were saying no to everything. And Mary, I thought you had better sense. Marrying a Navy man. Oh, now, just a minute. Now, uh, what have you got to look forward to? In and out of port, a lifetime of hellos and goodbyes, and you sit home and wait. Besides, you married a bigamist. You know that, don't you? A what? <laughs> sure. Every married sailor has two wives. Yeah, one is a ship and the other is a girl. Now, you take good care of her for me, son. But you don't. Yeah. You take good care of her for me, Pop. The Mary Boleslavsky Donahue. What a name. Ah, look, Mary, why couldn't you have married a nice, sensible fellow like, uh... Well, like, uh... uh... Like Mom did? Hmm? Come on, Pop. Swagger. <laughs> I've really been a member of the audience myself tonight. 
And so, from the nation's capital, I'll speak for the audience and congratulate Edward G. Robinson, Dennis O'Keefe, and Marguerite Chapman on an exciting performance. Well, thank you, C.B., in the words of the well-known postcard, we're having a fine time and wish you were here. <laughs> you were a sailor in the last war, Eddie, so it must have seemed quite natural being back in the Navy tonight. Well, all I missed was the uh, tight pants. What kind of a ship did you serve on in the last war, Eddie? Well, uh, this is a little embarrassing, uh, Margaret. The only ship I got on was a rowboat in Pelham Bay. As a matter of fact, I learned more about the Navy making pictures. <laughs> well, I, I learned it the same way, Eddie. And that reminds me that I have some good news for Dennis O'Keefe. Well, I'm glad to hear that, C.B. This is the first time Marguerite and I have ever been on the Lux Radio Theater, and now you run out on it. Well, Dennis, I, I thought you'd probably seen enough of me while we were filming the story of Dr. Wastel. But the good news is that I've had many very fine comments here in Washington on your performance in the picture. Along with Gary Cooper and the others, you've all really made a hit. Oh, well, that's swell, C.B., and thank you. But you still haven't squared yourself with Marguerite Chapman. I think she may have even something to tell you privately. Oh, you flatter me, Dennis. Uh, can that be true, Marguerite? Well, yes, Mr. DeMille, I did want to tell you that I feel I've known you a long time. Oh, you do? Yes, you. You see, I used Lux soap a long time. I've always found it a marvelous oh. help in keeping my skin soft and smooth. And believe me, that's something every girl is looking for. <laughs> well, as long as it's about Lux soap, Marguerite, I'm, I'm happy you told the world instead of just me. Uh, when do you get back to Hollywood, C.B.? In time for next week's rehearsal, Eddie. And next Monday, our play will be the 20th Century Fox success, Happy Land. And our stars will be Donna Michi, Francis D., and Walter Brennan. Happy Land is one of the finest stories to come out of the war. It has a dramatic message of hope for some among us who may have given up hope. Happy Land is about a man whose son was at the front. Well, save a seat in the audience for me, C.B. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. You brought the Squire into court handsomely. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Donna Michi, Francis D., and Walter Brennan in Happy Land. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Washington. Edward G. Robinson is from the original cast of Destroyer and will soon be seen in the 20th Century Fox picture, Tantico. Dennis O'Keefe will soon be seen in Up in Naples Room, an Edward Small production. Marguerite Chapman appeared through the courtesy of Columbia Pictures Corporation, producers of Cover Girl, and played her original role tonight in Destroyer. Heard in tonight's play were John McIntyre, Ed Emerson, Leo Cleary, Eddie Marr, Charles Steele, Norman Field, Bob Young, Tom Holland, Kay Dibbs, Tyler McVeigh, and Fred Barton. This program is broadcast overseas to our fighting forces through cooperation with the Armed Forces Radio Service. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. And this is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear Don Amici, Francis D., and Walter Brennan in Happy Land. She tried new Easy Mix Fry, and he said, Mmm, what a cake. Your best ever. She tried new Easy Mix Fry, and she said, What a shortening. Almost mixes itself. You try new Easy Mix Fry, and you'll say, It's amazing. Fry gives me lighter cakes that stay fresh longer. Buy Fry at your grocer's in the same handy jar. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>